I had a phone call about six years ago from an organization called Ashoka who support social entrepreneurs, they rang up and said, you are a social entrepreneur. And I said, I've never even heard that expression before. What's one of them then? And they kind of explained what a social entrepreneur was and I thought, yeah, I can, I can make that. That sounds kind of reasonable. I'm kind of a social entrepreneur, but I'm terrible at numbers. If you give me a spreadsheet the wrong way up, I, I probably wouldn't even notice. So uh, it's interesting for me as well, you know, that the idea that you can be an entrepreneur, but you don't need to have, a, have all the skills. You know, what you need is, is, a, is a, an eye for possibility. I think we all share a sense that the global economy as it's currently configured isn't really working for the vast majority of people. We have uh, a global economy designed to meet the needs of the 1%. And, and not really anybody else. And it generates all kind of externalities that we're just supposed to accept as just being how it is, but actually are just not okay. You know, in England now we talk about there being an epidemic of loneliness. I mean, what kind of economy creates an epidemic of loneliness just as a sort of an inevitable side effect? So I think what's shared here is a sense that we can do things differently, that we can do things better. I think we share a sense that this isn't just an idea, this is happening. This is underway, this is rolling out all over the place. This is growing so very, very, very quickly. Uh, so I think we share a sense of excitement about the possibilities that we can create here moving forward. Uh, and yeah, I think we share, we share something I think which reaches across kind of party political interests. You know, it always strikes me that actually party politics uh, is all just about polarizing people and dividing people down and people can't talk to each other and you know that breaks down whereas all of the, this stuff just cuts across all of that it doesn't matter if you're a socialist or conservative or whatever you are this is the sharing economy this is the new economy that's happening it's it meets our needs it's more nourishing and delicious and fantastic than what's currently on offer so why don't we go with that yeah i think we'll go with that I think the, the way that we bring this stuff to policymakers is by just doing it. You know, we have this idea that we've kind of grown up with that somehow the politicians are the ones who do the change and make stuff happen. I think a lot of the time politicians are trying to keep up with what's just happening anyway. And uh, you know, there's some great examples uh, all around the world of communities coming together and saying, let's just do it, we don't need anyone's permission, we're going to change that. And then the fact that they do that, eventually the government realise they need to change policy to accommodate this thing because it's the right thing to do. So I think there should always be an invitation for policy makers and politicians to be part of the conversations. We do a thing, sometimes when we have a transition network conference, we invite politicians to come not as a keynote speaker, but as a keynote listener. So they're invited to come and just to listen what people are saying and to hear what people are doing, to experience the kind of the buzz, the energy that you get in a room when people come together to, to think about this stuff. And um, uh, to do this in the way that we need to, we need politicians, but we can't wait for politicians. And we need new ways of imagining how we can influence politicians. And for me, the best way to influence politicians is by doing something so extraordinary that they all want to be part of it. We, we see here at, the, at this event today an incredible flowering of diversity around what the new economy will look like and the sharing economy and the commons. And I think having networks and people working together is really important. I think it's also really important to be asking all the time who isn't here. Uh, you know, it's very easy at something like this to get very excited about who is here and how many people there are and how fantastic we all are, but who isn't here? I'm really interested with the whole question about when people in the climate change movement talk about bringing diversity in the climate change movement, they generally mean more working class people, more uh, people of colour and act, but actually what about, the, where, where are the conservatives, where are the, where are the right wing people in that, you know, it's just as important because these issues become polarised, you know, the left wing like this, the right wing like this, they won't believe this, and the so for me, it's really important that we reach out in all kinds of different directions, not just to the places where it feels comfortable. We 
very often focus on the issues, climate change, economic crisis. I think all of those things are kind of a symptom of the fact that we've all forgotten how to relate to each other. You know, we have a, so I taught permaculture for many years, and one of the definitions of permaculture is that it is the science of maximizing beneficial relationships. And it's talking about the relationships between all the different elements. When you design a system, you put everything together in such a way that you maximize the relationships between the different things. But actually, I think transition now is really about maximizing relationships in a place. You know, there's a beautiful, I went a, while, a few weeks ago, I don't, I don't do this very often, but I went to a supper with some bankers. And uh, I was having this meal with these bankers, and uh, and I st and I was showing them local currencies. I was saying, "This is the these are Bristol pounds, and these are Brixton pounds, and these are Totnes pounds." And they go, "Wow, they're very cool, and, and aren't they beautiful?" Yes, but uh, he said, "I said, don't they don't they just make life really complicated?" I said, "They make life complicated for you, <laughs> and the rest of us have a great time." <laughs> And, uh, and there was some really good research that was done in Bristol recently about the Bristol Pound. They have a pay-by-text system. You go to the shop and you text people and you pay them with your phone. Showing the number of conversations people have when they go shopping like that than when they go shopping with plastic. And it was you know, ten times more conversations or something. And actually, when we, have a, when, we, when we live in a society where we can do all of our shopping for the week for our family and never have a conversation with anybody, that's terrible. Things, you know, the, the, the resilience of our communities is built on conversation, is built on relationship. So, uh, you know, so farmers markets, local currencies where you have to talk to people and interact with people and have a, have a relationship with people. For me, transition is really about how we sew our communities back together again and finding the things that are really, that everybody has in common. And that's really, really powerful, I think. So that for me is the key thing that we need to do. And so rather than saying we tackle climate change uh, and we get people together to do that, actually I think if we concentrate on bringing people together and inspire people with, with what we can do, we tackle all the other big issues anyway. I think, I think it's really interesting as a culture that we that we have, we have, we don't have the right stories for the time we're in now. You know, we have endless Hollywood films, and there's just been a new Mad Max film come out. You know, we have all these films about everything going horribly wrong. And if somebody makes a film about everything going horribly wrong, whether it's because of zombies or or nuclear bombs or whatever, we all go to the cinema and we like to watch things go horribly wrong. You know, but where, who makes films about things? turning out okay you know and who makes the films about people coming together and seeing a problem and responding to it with creativity and compassion and creating something remarkable we don't we don't make those stories you know so we really need those stories and you know, there's a big campaign now happening globally around this idea of leave it in the ground with climate scientists saying if we want to stay below two degrees we have to leave three quarters of all the fossil fuels we already know about never mind looking for new ones but we already know about we have to leave them in the ground well i think that's only going to happen if we have a if we have a sufficiently exciting story about what we can create above ground by leaving that underground and so i think we, we we need the stories but we also need the we, so a lot of what I do is being a storyteller. You know, I go to Brussels, I meet transition people, they say, oh, we're doing this great project, we're really exciting. Great, then I come to Paris and tell people, oh, I was just in Brussels, they're doing this. Oh, that's really good. And so you kind of, like a bee, you cross-pollinate stories. And I think that's really what, what kind of sustains and inspires people. So we need, we need the bigger kind of news stories, but we also need just those stories about people like us doing remarkable things. <laughs>